Hello everyone. So look, as you all know, right, or maybe if you're new, hello, maybe you didn't know this, but I'm often considered the best coder on the planet. Every single comment that I get regarding my coding is always like, wow, it's so amazing, it's so optimized, you're so great. And like, I'm like, okay, yeah, thank you. You know, I'm trying to be humble here, you know? And it's true, right? I mean, if I go to studio, which right now it looks like this, which I think looks, I don't know, it looks kind of worse than before, but it's okay, I guess. Like, I've made a good amount of projects, right? None of these were really full-on games. I've worked on games before for other people, but all of this stuff was just me testing out concepts, you know, trying to follow some tutorial, um, or, you know, just, you know, messing around, having fun. Um, and I've amassed a good amount of projects, I feel like, and especially in my group, right? I've made, like, <laughs> nine more. To show you a visual example, this is a game that I made fully myself, um, with a thumbnail that a fan made, and... It, this actually looks really cool. I really like how it like kind of fades in and out. And yeah, this is what the game looks like. Um, it took me, I think, maybe like two weeks to develop. And I was just playing around with this interesting concept where you can like change colors. Like that. Like, look at that. And you can pass through objects of the same color. And I really just found that idea interesting. And I was just like, yeah, you can phase through blocks with the same color as you. So in short, you just have to ensure that you're not like, you know, like passing through the block and dying, right? And, you know, obviously this game seems very easy. Um, like, you know, like th this dangerous laser could just be like passed like this. So like, it really, you know, doesn't matter much. And then I toyed around with this nice little, I don't know, ultimate ability where you can like pass through everything. And there was supposed to be like a cooldown and like, you know, it it's activated for five seconds. Oh yeah, there's a cooldown. Awesome. <laughs> and then I go through here and I, and I get kicked because I didn't know how to finish the game. And there we go. And so this is a game you can actually go and, you know, test out right now. And like I said, this wasn't something that I really worked on too much. I just liked the concept and I thought that, you know, making a little game to show it off would be cool. But maybe at some point I might, you know, come back to this and make this into an actual full, like, puzzle game where you have to, like, you know, juggle colors. Like, maybe there's, like, something, like, I don't know. Like, maybe I can have, like, a moving wall where, like, it moves, like, quickly towards you and you have to, like, really quickly, like, switch colors to not get like pushed or like something like that you know and so obviously you just saw that game and you were like wow like you were you really are the best scripter ever right however i have some terrible news okay i will admit i will admit i was like 13 at one point and when i was 13 i made some pretty bad games like, okay, they weren't bad, bad, like, you know, obviously every, every kid who's starting out, you know, is like trying to script, trying to, you know, add stuff and, you know, you don't really know what you're doing, but that's the fun of it, right? Like anyone who's tried anything, you know, 3D modeling, you know, uh, sports even, like just anything requires you to be stupid in the beginning, right? And, you know, the other day while I was reminiscing about just how amazing and cool I am and how amazing I script, right? I just got the idea of like revisiting my first ever roblox game and if i go through these projects i just want you to kind of think about like which one it is you know like which one looks like it could be a first game and if you picked this one then that is wrong that's actually my course game so i have a course yes and the link in the link is in the description but no this is the game okay it says modified because i opened it recently but like this is my first ever game and i haven't touched it since and what's cool is that this game is also playable, right? I'm not too sure why it says V2. I think I, I think I like made a little update like a month after making the game, which was made in 2019. So yeah, I was like around like 12 or like 13 at the time. And as you can actually see, this is where I was able to showcase my amazing artistic skills. Um, so yes, I did make this. 13 year old me went to Microsoft Paint and drew this with a mouse. And so you can see, you know, like zombie here, zombie here, a zombie here as well. I kind of, I, I didn't have a good sense of like scale so like they they all are kind of the same even though like this zombie is clearly much farther than this one is and i just want you to kind of look at this right now right what do we see we see clouds we see explosions you know huge explosion we see these you know little noob npcs we're like wow we see you know the player with a rocket launcher on like some red thing and you also see this weird like barricade looking thing with like holes inside of it and with this being my first ever game so, like, this is the equivalent of, like, a hell yeah simulator, you know? Explosion, zombies, amazing. Uh, look, he's, like, looking at the explosion. He's so, he's so cool. But what is the game actually like? I want to play the game. I want to show you the full combat sandbox V2 experience. But then I also want to actually open up the project in studio, because I still have it, and just show you 
what was even in it, right? Did I script anything? Because I didn't really know how to script back then, right? So the majority of the game is just assets that I found in the toolbox. And then I'm going to compare it to this, you know, fairly recent, um, fairly better polished game as well, I would say. So, you know, let's just check out what this game was like. And this is the combat sandbox experience. Yeah, look at that. We have the NPCs, right? We got the zombies, we have the rocket launcher. And yeah, look, we, we have the, the barricade, and we have that like red thing, which I was standing on. <laughs> that is so cool. And another thing as well, we have portals, right? So look at that. You can like teleport around. I don't even know why I, I added this really. I just, <laughs> I thought it was cool. So you might be asking right now, what is the idea of combat sandbox? Like what, what do you, what are you supposed to do here? And you, well, are you supposed to, you know, combat stuff? I mean, you have a bomb, you have a sword, which, you know, you can like melee around and nobody, you know, I played this game with a couple of friends, like, you know, when I first made it, nobody used this. I don't know why I, I added the sword. The main fun things were the grappling hook. Cause you know, that's kind of cool. You get to like, you know, like climb to stuff. It's, that's pretty fun. But the main weapon of choice for a lot of people that played this game was the rocket launcher. I remember this thing being insanely th fun. And again, I didn't make this, okay? Every, literally every single thing here is either like a terrain or like a toolbox item, right? I, I didn't make anything here. And this little rocket launcher tool is insanely fun. This rocket launcher can do this. There we go, okay. So yeah, if you saw that, you can rocket jump, okay? And, you know, I went kind of high, but you could do stuff like this. Look at that. Or like, like, yeah, okay. You gotta get the timing right. But like, it is so fun. You know, when you have like a bunch of zombies chasing you, when you have like some player chasing you, and then you can just click and just jump, and you can just go so high. So yeah, every, si every single other part, look what? Yeah, this is all I remember from this game, just jumping. That's it. And you could also like jump from like, you know, place to place. Like you can go like here and then you could like bounce off the terrain. You can do like here. Like, look at that. That is so fun. And eventually what would happen is that like a bunch of zombies would just keep spawning in and they would just like just target the nearest player. And again, this game is kind of supposed to have multiple players. So like, you know, the idea is that like you go to the middle and, you know, you collect these like, you know, OP items um, and then, you know, like there's like zombies. So it's like a very risky area. But the rocket launcher is the most OP item here, so there's no real reason to go anywhere in the middle. And yeah, I mean, the entire game is just you doing fun little combos like that, where you just kind of airstrike people. Like, you know, like, let me just try this, right? Okay. Ah, uh, no, hold on, wait. You gotta like, get the timing right. Yes, there we go, there we go, look at that, look at that. Just spam, just spam, oh yeah. And another thing that I remember as well is you could also, like, mine through the terrain. So, like, in theory, you could make yourself, like, a little hole, like, a little hideout, like, in case you wanted to, like... I don't know, just get away from all of the, you know, chaos or whatever. And this is effectively everything, right? We had a bomb, you know, that's kind of cool. It like explodes and then you like have zombies and whatever. And again, we did have these, you know, towers where you can like, you know, let me just grapple up real quick. And yeah, you know, you go on the tower and I'm just now realizing that my amazing artwork for the game was wrong. Um, the roof of the tower is not red, unfortunately. So yeah, I seem to have made a critic. Oh, damn. <laughs> And if I just rocket jump over here, we can see indeed that the roof is not red. Okay, that that is my fault as an artist. Okay, I, I fail. I failed my game. But yeah, you know, you like when you look at the artwork, and you know, you, you can kind of see what I was going for, right? Like, you know, there's like a thing here, and it's like there's like a zombie that's supposed to like try and climb up, and uh, you know, I take my rocket and like I shoot it. I mean, yeah, like the artwork looks a lot more interesting. I'd say like it's it's not exactly like this, but you know, I mean, it's close. Like you know, I shoot a rocket, you know, they kind of explode, boom. They're like flying around. It's, it's kind of close. But now you might be wondering, what does the project actually look like? What is inside of the project? Are there any scripts, right? And also, could I add any code to this game to make it a little better? Like knowing my experience right now, is there anything that I could do to like make it a smoother experience? All right, so as it's loading, I immediately am seeing a bunch of errors. Um, I'm not authorized to access asset. And I believe this is because a lot of the assets that I used, um, initially Roblox didn't, as far as I can tell, didn't, they didn't like require authorization to use certain assets. And now they do, right? So a lot of the stuff from the toolbox that I, you know, borrowed for this game, um, I'm no longer allowed to use and certain assets are just deleted completely. So I just can't really do anything about them. But yeah, if we look at the project, um, if we open up the workspace, you can just see how unorganized this is. Look at that. No folders. 
No models. I mean, we do have models, but not in the way that they're supposed to be used. Yeah, a bunch of NPCs, uh, observation towers, spawn, 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 spawn. And we also apparently have a sound with a script inside of it. And this sound doesn't have an ID. So this is kind of interesting. When I open up the script, apparently I've made three sound ID variables. I've done the music and then I just kept playing each sound <laughs> on loop. So I suppose I did know a little bit of scripting, but obviously like, you know, this is pretty easy. You know, you could easily look this up on like dev forum and just easily understand how to write something like this. So none of this is really like, you know, expert or advanced level. Um, if I go to the starter pack, we can see, yeah, all of the tools, you know, the rocket launcher, all of that. Um, but yeah, the starter player has nothing. The players folder has an animation and I'm not too sure what that's doing there. But yeah, everything else is basically non-existent. The entire game is just free workspace models. Oh, and also I suppose the terrain as well, right? So this is blocky terrain. And what I did is I just took the base plate, right? Made it look like sand and just drew this big square thing around it. And you know, if I play test the game right now, uh, damn, damn, okay, Jesus. Yeah, so clearly something is not going right. Um, and I could also do this. And now I'm flying away from the map. So, okay, I did say I could write a small little script, right? So, let me actually do that right now. And specifically what I want to do is I want to write something where um, you can press a key to return to, like, the center of the map, just in case you get flung off. And I think this will also be, like, a cool little comparison between the two scripts, right? So when you look at something like this, like, it's very simple, right? And it's clear that, you know, I, I just stole this from, like, some dev forum post. And if I remember correctly, this took me somewhat of a while to write but for something like a script which is able to you know return you to the middle of the map with just a press of a key i could easily honestly do something like that game dot user input service uh input began so we try and get the input like so and then we just check if this input is equal to let's say dot e or no dot r for reset and then we can also say script dot parent because this script will be inside of the character dot humanoid root part dot position is going to be equal to vector three dot new zero ten zero. So let's actually see if this works at all. If I press R right now, uh, okay. <laughs> let's try C frame, okay, like so. And if I press R, damn. All right, boys, give me one second. C frame dot new. This should do it. Um, look, I'm not too good with C frames, okay. Everyone hates C frames. And if I do it right now, there we go. Amazing. Okay. So yeah, that only took me like two minutes to write. But you know, now, now, in one, yeah, look, look at that. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. With one key press, I'm back in action. And then, you know, I probably, this probably would be abused in like a real game scenario. Like, I don't know, like, you're like some, some guys like shooting a rocket at you and then you just like teleport to the middle. So, you know, this, this isn't really the best choice game design wise but i mean look that doesn't matter okay like look you can't really expect game design from for a game like this you know like it's just like it's just not gonna happen and now on the contrary let's look at the actual project for uh the color shift game you can already immediately see a lot more stuff right if we look at the workspace you can actually see that like i'm organizing this stuff a lot better right ability attachments blocks um and then you know in here it's like yeah we have all the blocks here enemies which was just a little fun beta feature that i was trying to implement uh we have the kill blocks the labels reset blocks solid blocks i probably could have made this even more better now thinking about it like i probably should have made more more folders for like each of these but you know this is infinitely better than whatever i had going on back there um, you might also notice that i'm using a, a custom skybox or not really like again this I, I did find this in the toolbox as well but i didn't even know that you could change the skybox um back then right so that's another thing you might you might have noticed um, a big thing is also the use of replicated storages so i was able to grasp um using effects um i learned more about gradients and also remote events right which is where i get to scripts right look at this stuff Look at this stuff. It's it's not a lot, I get it, but like, I wrote all of this myself, you know? Like, I don't know. Then, well, we obviously have the GUI, which is something that I never had in the, in the, in the show. I didn't even know what GUI was back then. And here we have the starter character. We have um, two scripts as well, a label change script and a beam script, which looks like this. And this game was also made around a year ago. So that is about a four year difference when it comes to development knowledge. And I know that it might seem like this just isn't enough for the four years, but you gotta remember, this was a quick thing that I made in literally like a week or so 
just to have fun with a concept, right? As opposed to the other game, which I think I genuinely was working on it for like, I think like a month or two, like a couple months. And th that's even surprising to me because you might be thinking like, what what even is there to work on, right? Because th there, like, there really isn't anything. You just go to the toolbox and you just find stuff. But somehow I remember the game did take me a while to make. As opposed to this, where I was just able to make something like this in just a week. And also I'll add on, I worked on this for a small amount of time each day. So if I really locked in, I could have probably done this in like two days. But again, that color shift game is just an example, right? Like I said, I've worked on a lot of games that aren't mine. I've made a lot of games which don't look good, but they're just there to kind of help me grasp a concept. And I just thought it'd be really cool to just look at my first ever public Roblox game, right? Just, I don't know how I made it. And also again, to compare it with more recent stuff. I guess if you're going to take anything away from this video, I know this is kind of just meant to be, you know, a funny little video where I just show my stupid project that I made when I was 13, but you might be in that position right now. Like you might be that stupid 13 year old or 18 year old or whatever, um, wanting to make a game and you're just messing around, you're having fun, but you, you like understand that what you're making isn't really quality, right? Like you're maybe excited about it, you're passionate about it, but you understand that like there's a lot of things that you're limited by and you just... While you're excited by it, you aren't really at the stage where you can proudly show off your work as quality. And um, what I will say is obviously just keep doing this stuff, you know, keep learning. Me personally, I learned from just YouTube videos, right? There's a lot of really good YouTube tutorials when I was out there, specifically Gnome Code. Um, I think like Al Alvin Blocks or whatever his name was. There's a lot of really helpful stuff out there that you could watch for free to learn. Um, if you do have money to spare, because a lot of YouTube videos, unfortunately, are outdated at this point. And those that aren't, they're kind of like, they don't cover everything, right? They're, they're kind of all over the place. Um, and well, they're, they are really helpful. Like, I'm not saying they're not. Sometimes you do want to just have a, you know, full a package from start to finish where you just fully understand everything about Roblox Studio. And like I said, if you do have money to spare, I would also recommend buying a course. Now, yes, I have a course myself, but if you don't like my teaching style, you could just find any other course. But I will say again, that if you like my teaching style, and if you have a spare $40 for around seven hours worth of content about Roblox Studio for an absolute beginner, um, do feel free to check that out. It's linked in the description and the pinned comment. And while you're at it, uh, follow my Instagram and like my uh, pictures of pigeons because I have like two pictures where it's like a pi it's like pigeons and you know the pigeons look kind of funny so you know that th that's a good enough reason to go follow me but yeah you know let me know what you think about the amazing combat sandbox game um and like I said this is a playable game right by at the original lamp which is me you could go you could play this game right now and as for color shift it's in my bite blocks group so you could also go join that if you want bite blocks official um, also, you know, check it out, play it, you know, just leave a comment, let me know what you think of both games. You could also join the Discord, but, you know, a lot of people have said that it's like a terrible, terrible place. So, so you know, do that on your own will. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching. Yeah.